So the question that I get asked most often is about charging the bike and how all that works. So I'll do a quick explanation as I head back to the main road about that. So when I bought it, it that was my big concern as well. So I upgraded the battery from 400 watt to a 500 and then this year I bought a second 500. So I, I'm traveling with two 500 watt batteries in good conditions, uh, kind of like the moment. Not too much wind, reasonable hills, all that sort of stuff. I mean, I call pretty severe hills reasonable, but that's the way it works. I can probably get 100 kilometers easily enough out of each battery, staying mostly in eco mode. Uh, so there's a range of 200 and if the conditions are ideal probably 250 uh, ideal I mean nearly completely flat very little wind good road surfaces uh, so in terms of like so I'll talk a bit about what causes you to use more power in a minute but the question people always want to know is how do I charge them uh, and what most people are thinking oh I'd need to stay in a and b every night to recharge my batteries and yeah if you want to be absolutely sure of a recharge at the end of your cycle yes that's what you need to do uh, however if you're willing to be flexible and charge where you get an opportunity uh, well you probably don't need to do that and that's that's what I'm doing so I've gone this is the, my 13th morning now uh, and the first 11 days I didn't have any B&B stay at all. I did have one yesterday because the day before I was doing 120 and also because I was sending this GoPro from Amazon to it. Uh, so yeah, so I've done 12 days without and basically because I have the second battery uh, that gives me space to take risks about where exactly I, you know, whether or not I get a charge, an opportunity to charge and in practice opportunities to charge exist all over the place. Uh, I mean like for instance if I'm having a meal and a pint in a pub and there's a plug available I'll, I'll plug in and charge up you know and probably add, uh, top up a battery, add two thirds or something to it. Uh, uh, ferry terminals will very often have a point you can plug in. Uh, you know, there's a whole whole load of places, in other words, uh, that have accessible plugs that you can plug in. Uh, some places that campsites, a lot of campsites have bothies and they have plugs for people to charge their phones off, so you can charge a battery off that as well. Uh, I've been using that a lot on this trip, that's more unusual in Ireland, uh, so actually it makes Scotland a bit more doable. Uh, and then, actually, the, incidentally, you'll, you'll see plugs in, in uh, other public buildings, basically. Uh, as you come across things. Uh, so it's a little hairy <laughs> if you're doing a very long stretch with no population because there just then won't be things. Uh, and I guess at the end of the day, if you ran flat, you could knock on somebody's door and plead. Although there's large parts of Scotland, there's not very many doors to lock, knock on either. Uh, but, and of course, you can always cycle the bike to some extent with a flat battery. I mean, the smart thing to do is obviously if you're running down to your last few kilometers, is only use that for the hardest hills to get up. It'll go flat very quickly, of course. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's the kind of the set of things I do. So uh, the other thing I was going to say, the, I mean, how far a battery goes is dependent on a huge range of factors. And the main thing people think about, uh, are, are, which is hills, actually probably isn't the most important thing, unless you're cycling somewhere where you're going to be cycling 50 kilometers continuously up hills, or maybe the Alps or the Himalayas or something, this would be important. But in most landscapes, if you cycle up a pass for 200 meters on the other side of that, you're coming down a pass for 200 meters, and you, you'll use no battery coming down because you'll be hitting 25 all the way, maybe you'll be freewheeling, and whatever you want to do yourself, you know. Uh, I think 61 is my record. Uh, but so, so uh, other hill, you know, steep hills do eat more battery, but not anything like a, as drastic effect as you might think. Uh, what happens a lot more is rough road surfaces, uh, particularly anything that's sandy, because that's a huge amount of additional tire resistance. Um, situations where the steep hill's going up but you can't really uh, freewheel coming down or, or, or you don't get a continuous run going down. Scotland can be a bit like that with busy roads and passing places. It can be a bit frustrating that you have to lose momentum now and again. Uh, but by far I think the biggest impact is strong winds. If you've got a wind blowing into your face, heavy wind, you're going to go through a lot more battery power. And of course that is something that's not predictable in advance. You can't tell what the wind's going to be like by looking at a map. You can find out about prevailing winds. Uh, I mean, anybody who's a, a cyclist will be aware of those as various factors, but that's that's where it is. Now, my experience, I've 
seldom completely flattened a battery unless I'm kind of aware in advance that's likely because I'm doing a very big run um, I've never flattened two batteries so I've never been stuck and I've done about 9,500 kilometers at this point uh, it is theoretically possible I know that but I basically moved from when I started doing this being very nervous about that to being a lot more used to it the one thing I'd say to you is if you're, you're new to an e-bike uh, do a lot of cycling in the low mode in eco mode with uh, the range indicator turned on and watch it as you cycle because you'll see it shoots up and down alarmingly uh, I'd love to know the algorithms for them but uh, you know if I'm if I'm cycling out of Dublin into the mountains if I'm cycling out of Dublin into the mountains of a very steep ascent initially I'll see the range drop from 110 down to 30 <laughs> uh, because some of what because some of what I'll be doing will be will be 13% slopes right uh, but then once I'm up on the plateau at the top and once I start to come down I'd see it increase back to 120 uh, you know so that is very instructive uh, and basically you'll get a sense for it yourself what the numbers actually mean and then when you're cycling you'll be less inclined to stress about it uh, you know I think a second battery makes sense it is an extra I think 2.6 kilos which is quite a bit of weight but then the bike's heavy already I'm carrying a lot of luggage I'm carrying me so actually that's probably only 2% of the total weight I'm adding to it uh, so I think it's it's worth it for the reassurance the cost is annoying uh, but check out online sites there's one in France in particular that I got a 500 watt battery for 600 when the retail price on was 850 uh, so that is also worth shopping around for but anyway hope that answers some of the questions people keep asking me because it's a favorite question